Hey everybody, my name is Bailey Smith. I am a co-owner of Recaptured Values, a clothing brand for kids, and we're incorporating moms and dads a little bit, coming soon. But I'm going to do a tutorial today about how to do a double bow head wrap, tied. This is a tied version. This is how I do mine. And um, I'm really doing this as a tool for people who buy our headbands to learn how to retie them if you choose the tied option. We offer a tied option, which is just the, what I'm about to show you, but we also offer a tied version, which is sewn permanently for people who, or for the kids who like to yank them off. So, um, first I'm gonna show you all the stuff that I use. Um, here we go. All right, hopefully you can see that. I have a whole bunch of stuff on my shirt. <laughs> Yucky, okay, let's see if I can, let me a lint roller real fast. I'm with velvet. I have all these things. This is almost empty. I need to get a new one. That's what velvet does. We'll do another video on that another day. Okay, so what I use, this is my trusty handy dandy ruler that I bought from Hobby Lobby. It is 24 inches long and it is 5 inches, I believe, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 inches this way. And it's perfect because that's exactly what I cut my headbands. Um, I guess it's width, the width of the headband. I cut it five inches exactly. So, um, and these are my blanks basically that I use boards. I just cut them out to the lengths that I wanted. Didn't have time to sand them, so I just taped them with painter's tape. Works just as good. Um, the reason you'd sand them, or uh, in my case, I taped them, you could paint them, whatever you wanna do, is because um, if it's just a natural piece of plywood, it's gonna have splinters along the edges where you cut, and you know, you don't want splinters messing up your fabric and whatnot, so okay. Then we have this fabric here. Um, this is often referred to as bullet knit right now. Um, this one's a beautiful rust color. It looks kind of red in the picture. It's a rust, it's kind of like a burnt orange red in real life. Everybody asks, how do you cut your fabric? How do you know? Important thing to know, when you cut your fabric, you need to know where the stretch is going. So how you do that, this fabric here, it's, I'm kind of cheating because it's obviously the selvage. Um, it's the grain, grain line versus the stretch. You need to know that when you're doing headbands, it's really important, otherwise you're gonna have some crazy, really tight, not fitting headbands and it's not gonna work. So, um, this is the grain line. When you pull the fabric and it doesn't stretch, it's the grain line, or it's a minimal stretch, grain line. The most stretch, is going to be the, the stretchiest part. If you're using a four-way stretch fabric, I mean, it's going to be stretchy most both ways, but uh, most of the time you're going to have one area, one way that stretches the most. Um, the best way to determine that also, if you haven't already cut it off, which we're doing headbands, there's no need to cut it off, is the selvage part here. It's on each end of the fabric. So when they cut your yard of fabric, they cut it, with your selvage. So like, selvage is over here, and this is the fold. And they'll cut 36 inches this way, and that's your yard of fabric that you buy. So, what I do is I'll fold fabric, selvage to selvage, see? This, like I said, most selvage doesn't look like this. This is kind of really easy to, to see the selvage. Normally it's just this is the inside of the selvage, and you can kind of see it's a little different. I don't know if you could see that. Kind of, it's a little different. It doesn't stretch on the selvage, it stretches against the selvage. But I'm gonna show you how to fold this right here, fold selvage to selvage, fold here, and then fold it again. I'm gonna fold it again. All right, and then you lay it down. I just try to make sure everything's lined up. Let me move this out of the way. I just try to make sure everything's lined up and good to go over here, like this, lined up here, pull it over just a little bit. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you know the stretch is going the right way. So then I just take my handy dandy ruler here that I bought from Hobby Lobby, that's the perfect length, and I'll just hold it down. And then I use my handy dandy rotary cutter. I just bought this one because I got tired of the friskers or whatever you pronounce that. It kept messing up. People say there's a lifetime warranty on that. I got tired of dealing with it. So, I bought this one and I buy the replacement blades. 
Um, I can link those. Um, I buy these on Amazon, and they work really good. I mean, you're gonna have to buy them a lot. Uh, they they're not perfect, but they they're a lot cheaper for a I think it's a ten pack um, on Amazon. It's a lot cheaper than buying the crazy blades at the the stores. So then I just cut. I cut use my rotary cutter. Don't push too hard. You don't want to dull your blade out or cut your mat. I have a self-healing mat. Okay, it didn't work. Let's see here. So, push it here like this. Cut this side off. This just goes in the trash. You're just trying to make it evil, <laughs> evil, equal parts here. So, you want to cut. And I promise you guys I'm not pressing that hard. Um, it probably appears that way, but I'm not. Okay. Just make sure it's all cut there. Okay, so move the excess fabric out of the way. Throw this in the trash. All right, move the roller. And now you have a head wrap piece for the double bow head wrap. Okay, so I'm going to use the one to four year because my daughter is 21 months old and this is the one that fits her so I'm gonna do it to match to make fit her head so okay here we go what I do selvage to selvage again okay so you're gonna hold this part here because that's the middle and that's where you're gonna want to place your block down I think we're gonna start selling these blocks too. They're gonna to look a lot better than this. But um, I'll post that link in the description below for people who wanna build or to do their own headbands. I can get these blocks going for you. Um, so it's really easy, it's a lot easier. Um, so yeah, middle, put it on the middle. I just use my fingers. You could put a mark, a pin mark if you want to, whatever. Um, so then you grab your pieces and just do it like a, a shoe tie, the first, first tie. All right, and you don't stretch it too much. I don't stretch mine too much. It's still kind of loose, just enough to go around the board. You're not over stretching it, okay? All right, so let me move this closer so you guys can see, hopefully. See if it'll go down further. I don't know if it'll do it. Okay, see if you can see. So I'm holding on to this one. I do it on a surface to where I can hold it. Um, I use my stomach, whatever. Um, so. Here is the part, okay. So you have the part that has the bullet. This one's not too bullety. I don't know if you can see the texture. That's the bullet part. And this is the inside part, the, the part that um, would be the inside of the flaps. So, or the bows, not really the flaps. So I pull it around to where that part, the inside is like this. And then I fold it over my finger like this. See? And then I hold it. See my finger here? I'm gonna hold it here. Okay, hold it. And this part that I was holding with my stomach, I'm gonna also make the inside go this way. That doesn't really matter as much. Basically, you hold this piece and you wrap around this piece and under, and then you're gonna pull it through. Hold your bow piece with your hand, otherwise it'll come through too. <laughs> okay, see what I did there? So then you're gonna pull this piece really tight to tighten that up. See what I did there? And all the while you're doing that, you need to like fluff this part of your headband, otherwise it's gonna be really weird. All right, so that's the first bow piece there. And then what I like to do is I like to straighten this out. Sometimes it'll be like all wanky. I'll do this. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. So then this piece, that's the piece that we just pulled through the loop. I'll pull it up here. So then we're going to work with this piece here. So what I do is I will fold it here. Just like that. You can see what I did. Just like that. And then, so you see the loop. We're gonna hold this up and we're gonna go underneath into the knot right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's gonna go in that part. And so you push it through with your finger, like this. And you pull it through.
All right, and then you have to fluff it up to make it look right. So pull, I pull the underneath part straight, and I pull the top part straight. And then I use this part, which is the one that we just pushed through. I pull it to make it match this side because you want the, the, it to be even. So you pull it, keep pulling it until it works. I mean, you can't really mess it up too much. And if you do, all you just start over. It's no big deal. So um, you can't hurt fabric. All right. So just fluff it until you get it to be even the way you want it. See, like sometimes it'll be weird like this and it's just because it's the edges have folded in and so you just want to try to manipulate it to where it comes out like that all right so as you can see we have two bow pieces on you can see it let's see here. yeah Ooh. we have two so we're going to use these to make our final two bows to make it a double bow. So we're going to do the same thing basically that we did with this last one. We're going to fold this, boop, 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 there, same thing I did, fold it, and it's going to do it again. So you're going to do it again, it's going to go through here in the, in the knot right here. So push it through, it doesn't really matter which one you do here. You could do either side, so but then you push through the knot. This time, it's gonna come in between this bow piece. So this is the bow piece right here. It's gonna come in between it, so you pull it through. Make sure you're holding on to it. Cause it can, you can pull it all the way through. Just no big deal, you can just push it right back through, but. Okay, so see, this is gonna be long. This is the part you're gonna cut off. I, we, we cut this part off and just throw it away. Um, some people can make stuff with it. Uh, we just don't deal with it. So, okay. So now we got three bow pieces. And we're gonna do our final one. And we're gonna just move this one out of the way. So then we got this one. And this one, remember again, you want the bullet part to be the top part. This is the inside part, which is normally smooth. I, I haven't seen a double-sided bullet knit before, so um, you want the bullet side first. So this time, instead of going under the knot we're gonna go um how do you say that <laughs> we're gonna go like this you see what i'm saying yeah all right so you're gonna go through the knot right here this is the knot part there's the bow pieces bow piece knot you're gonna go through the knot here And it should come out, here's the bow piece again, bow piece should come out in the middle of the bow piece, so you pull it through. Alright, so as you can see, you need to fluff it up to make it look just how you want it to look. Some people like them really big, and all you have to do to fix that, if they're too small or they're too big, all you have to do is pull, and just pull, and you see which one, so like that pulls, and that makes that smaller. You just keep doing that to figure out, you know, what size you want it to be. Um, and then, what I do is I get some scissors. Oh. All right, scissors, and I'll just cut off the access like that. And like that and I'll just stuff it in the bow piece here like this and then this one kind of already tucked in there okay so now you can see it's a double bow it's a little wonky we'll fix it in a second but the um, one way you can fix it it's kind of cool that I try to do is tuck it inside of the bow piece so like this is a bow piece and so you tuck this bow in this bow and it kind of makes it more uniform and not as crazy and like this one would go into this piece here tuck that bow into that one and then you just work with it until like I said you get it to where you want it to go 
then a lot of people ask how do we get ours to stand up so nice and this is the test we do if you do this if you hold it up here and it's like flopping forward some bows will just like flop all the way forward you don't want that so like stand it up do this a few times is it flopping forward does it look crazy you probably need to make your bow loop smaller um, but this one I'm pretty happy with so make it it's a little lopsided so let's pull it At least on the camera it was lopsided it might not be lopsided in real life but they are naturally going to kind of tilt to the side which is super cute when it's on um but that's pretty much the head wrap um here's the what it looks like off of the thing you can kind of see it so it looks like off and um for our sewn option all of our head wraps are done like this for our sewn option, we just tie, we just do a few darts in the middle of the knot um, to keep it from being able to yank apart. Some people don't want to hassle with having to retie it, but this video will serve as a good video to show you how, if you want to retie it, you can. And the best part about having a tieable bow is it is adjustable because we did leave a lot of slack in the, inside the bow. This much slack was in the bow. Um, you don't have to cut that off if you don't want to. It does look a little bulky if you don't, the, these pieces. But we choose to leave about three inches. Um, so you'll have about three inches of adjustability to keep it for longer wear. Or if you happen to choose the wrong size with our company, you can retie it using this video. These are our double bows. Hope we help you guys out. Alright, thanks for watching.